It's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. I, how many of y'all really realize that uh, this year is already almost halfway over? And what have we done for God? You know, we was created for a purpose. And what is our purpose? Was we created to just fill a pew? Was we created to just work? Were we created to just have a family and, and laugh and have fun? Were we created to just to go day by day and, and just see how we survive? Or were we created to share God's love? And I believe as Christians, we know the answer to that question. We were created to tell others about Jesus, to tell others about what God has done for us, to tell others that there is a way out of depression, there is a way out of sin, there is a way out of this hopelessness that seems to be filling our world today. This morning, we're going to talk a little bit about Moses. And, and we all know who Moses is. He, he is. he is the man. I was telling Pam the other night, I was studying and reading the things, and I thought, I read, reading there, and I thought, man, he, he was like the first gangster, the mobster. Man, he, he took it upon himself to, to, to defend his, his brother and his, his, his own kind and killed this guy, and he buried him in the desert. Man, he is just a mobster out in Las Vegas, burying them people in the desert. And I thought, man, but he stood up for what he believed was right. And that's how we need to be. All right, if you have your Bibles, and um, <laughs> Exodus chapter 2, verse 1, go. Never find the first. Hurry. Exodus chapter 2. Read it. Verse 1. All right. We do that in, in our Sunday school. We would have Bible drills, and, and it teaches the kids the Bibles, the books of the Bible. A lot of them have a hard time with the Old Testament. I have a hard time with the Old Testament. But it, it's, it's a lot of fun, and it's a good, good way to learn. But Exodus chapter 2 says, And there went out a man to the house of Levi and took to wife a daughter of Levi. And the woman conceived and bare a son. And when she saw him that he was a goodly child, she'd hid him three months. And when she could not longer hide him, she took him for an ark of bulrushes and daubed it with slime and with pitch and put the child therein. And she laid it in the flags by the river bank, brink. And his sister stood afar off to wit what we done to him. And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river, and her maidens walked along by the riverside. And when they saw the ark among the flags, she sent her maid to fetch it. And when she had opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the babe wept. She had compassion on him and said, this is one of the Hebrews' children. Then said his sister to Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and call to thee a nurse of the Hebrew women, that she may nurse the child for thee? And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, go. And the maid went and called the child's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, take this child away and nurse him for me. And I will give thee thy wages. And the woman took the child and nursed it. And the child grew, and she brought him back to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. And she called his name Moses, as she said, because I drew him out of the water. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time to come together and to, to learn what our purpose is. And Father, not only to learn what our purpose is, but for us to see your glory 
in these things. Lord, we, we know that there is a reason that we are still here. There is a reason that you woke us this morning. There is a reason that you brought us together. There is a reason for this scriptures today. So, Lord, I ask right now as we go through this that you help me say the words that you need for us to hear. Lord, I pray for our, our church family here this morning, the Families that have lost loved ones, Father, we pray for, for a, a comfort upon them that, Father, that only you can give. Father, we pray for the ones that are sick, Father, with what the world says is uncurable diseases. We pray, Lord, that you just give them comfort and peace. And, Father, if it is your will that they be healed here on earth, we ask for that. But, Father, if it's not, Lord, we just pray again for their comfort and peace. Father, we, we lift up. Our elders in the church, Father, we pray, Father, for them and their health. We pray for our pastor. Father, we continue to pray for him daily that you would just use him in such a way that he leads your congregation in the right direction. We pray for his safety. We pray for their health. Father, we just ask that you just continue to bless them. And thank you again for this opportunity. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. There was a um, thing I give Jamie. Jamie, did you put it up? Did I jump over it? All right. You only get one first birthday. These are just things to think about. You, know, you get 18 summers as a kid to run and play and not have any worries. You get one first day, one, two. If you're lucky, you might get three proms. One high school graduation. As parents, we get one chance to teach our children to be kind humans. And sometimes the days seem long. But man, the years are short. How short are they? Very. This is just something to think about as we go through this. As if, if you read... The book of Exodus, if you understand why Moses was put in an ark and why it was important for Pharaoh's daughter to find him. The reason why is because Joseph had died in chapter 1. It talks about how Joseph had passed and his generation had passed and the new Pharaoh, the new king, didn't want nothing to do with him. He had no, no idea who Joseph was. He didn't know or didn't realize the blessings that God had put upon Egypt because of Joseph. So he didn't want nothing to do with it. All he knew was that, hey, I'm the king, and this people that are living here amongst us now, they're getting to be more than we are. And, and if our enemies get mad at us and they come at us and, and they want to fight us, and there's enough of these Israelites to join them and overtake us, and then they're going to leave. We're not having nobody to do our stuff for us. We can't just sit around anymore and, and, and have them work our fields. We can't have them to build our homes if they decide to fight, because there's just so many of them. So he decided that it's in the best interest of the Egyptians that when these Hebrew women are having their babies, if they're having a, a female, then that's fine. That's all right. But if it's a male baby, we need to get rid of him. We need to kill him, throw him in the river, do something, just get rid of him. So he told the, the midwives, he said, when you are there and it's a male, kill him, get rid of him. But if it's a female, let them live. They'll be all right. So, but the midwives, they, they feared God. They, they didn't want to disobey God. They didn't want to make God mad. How many of us consciously don't want to make God mad? But how many of us do because we don't do what he asks us? 
So they went, and they, they feared God so much that they did not do what the king wanted. They didn't do what Pharaoh wanted. And, and the, so the population of the Israelites just kept growing and growing. They're just like rabbits. They just kept growing and growing. And then the, he came and he told her, he said, hey, what's going on? How come you're not killing all the males like I asked you to do? And when I was reading this, I thought, man, that's funny. Because she said, the midwives, they told us, well, said, these Hebrew women, they, they're so lively, so big, that by the time we get there, they've already had their baby. They've already taken it and they're already taking care of it. So they're not like the Israelite or the uh, Egyptian women that whine and cry all the time and, and can't. They, they got to have us there. These, these Hebrew women don't. They just go, drop it and go. And, and, and so they, he said, okay. And so he went to the point to the, where he told the other Egy Egyptians, he said, if you see him, being born, get rid of them. We don't need them. There's too many of them. They're going, they're going to attack us, and then they're going to leave, and then we're going to have to do everything. And man, being the king, I don't want to do nothing. It, I know you don't want to do nothing. So we got to have them here. So they, they went on this, and, and so when every male was born, if they was there, they had to kill them. And... Um, Moses' mom, they don't tell you who, who his mom is right here, but later on it does tell you that her name is, is Jochebed. And, and Jochebed means glory to God or glory of God or God's glory. So when Moses was born, and it says that he was a, a goodly child, that he looked good, he was healthy. And I, I just imagine there was a no blemishes, there was, a, there was a no nothing wrong with him. I think he was a, probably a bigger child, a really healthy-looking child. And, and so she knew that he was special. She knew that he was special, so she hid him for three months. And as parents, we know that at three months, the, the babies, they're rolling, making all kinds of noise, and they're, they're not able to, you can't keep them quiet like you can when they were younger. You can't just feed them and put them back to sleep, because they're ready to learn, they're ready to explore. And, and I figure that's why at three months, it says that, that she had put him in this ark, and she put him in the Nile River. And she put him in the Nile River for a reason. Because the Nile, re the, the Nile River, it, it was a, uh, a special river for the Egyptians. They, they worshipped the, the water there. They, that's where they went and did their ceremonies and things. And they, even the, the Pharaoh's daughter went, and that's where they bathed and cleaned themselves. And so she had this planned out. I believe she had it planned out. I believe that, that she knew the the schedule that the Pharaoh's daughter kept. So she puts him in this ark, covers it, puts it in the bulrush, and has her, her daughter to stand by. And I, I, I just picture this, so that she's standing there holding it, and when Pharaoh's daughter comes by and all her maids, that she kind of just pushes it out there to where she could find it. And she stands back behind the bushes where, where she can... Can still see but can't be seen. And then when Pharaoh's daughter sees it, they go and they, they she gets her maids to bring it to her and she opens it up and there's this baby boy. And and while this baby boy is there and he, he says that he wept, and so she felt sorry for him, she had compassion on him. And she knew it was a Hebrew child. And you know she knew the law. You know she knew what her dad wanted, what her dad expected of all the Hebrew men, of all the Hebrew male babies. He didn't expect to be alive. But since it was Pharaoh's daughter, you know, she, she kind of got her way. And, and so she took it out of, out of, out of the water and, 
And lo and behold, here comes the sister. Hey, I see you got a baby here. It looks like it needs somebody to take care of it. I know a lady back over here in the Hebrew women that could probably do it. Just okay, take the child. Go get the go get the lady that you think can, can take care of this child and bring her here. So what does she do? She gets the best person in the world to take care of that child. She goes and gets the baby's mama. She brings her back and she, and she says, Okay, she says, You take care of this child. He they said, Don't talk about that. I'm gonna pay you to do it. So I'm going to pay you to take care of my child. Now, who, who wouldn't want to do that? Who wouldn't want to get paid to take care of their own child? Who wouldn't want to get paid to, to take their child and raise them the way that you want to raise them because you're going to have them for a little while, teach them what you want to teach them, learn, help them to learn what you need them to learn and what God wants you to teach them. So, yeah, she jumped on it. She said, okay, I'll do it. So she took the baby, and she, she got paid for it. And then when the baby got old enough, she took him back and, and gave, her, gave him back to Pharaoh's daughter. And, and, and I was looking, when I was reading this, I thought, man, it's, it's kind of sad also because how many parents, how many moms, when they find out that they're pregnant, one of the first things they think of is what they're going to name the child. She didn't get to name her child. She didn't get to name him Moses. Pharaoh's daughter named him Moses. Because she drew him out of the water. And, and I, I looked that up a little bit, and there was different thoughts on that, on the name. Uh, but in like a, in the Hebrew word, in the Hebrew language, it kind of, there was one way that it was pronounced, that it said it meant to, to draw out of water. And, I, and, you know, with all the Hebrews there, and you know that they were speaking their language, so they, it was probably bilingual, and so I, I think that's why she named him that, I think that's just my thoughts, if you want to study on it and come up with your own conclusion on it, that's fine, that's just, I'm going to throw that out there. But she gets to name, name him, and now you have to, to remember now that he is in the house of Pharaoh. But he knows, I, I, I believe that he knew from his learning, from being raised by his mom, that he was a Hebrew child. He knew where he came from. He knew that he was saved for a reason. I, that's just what, it's just, again, this is my belief, because... He went on and done what God wanted him to do. So I believe that, that she taught him and told him the, the history of that. He probably said, Where, where's all the other boys at? Come, you know, they're all dead because they didn't make it because that was what we're supposed to do. So I, I believe that he, he knew and he understood that there was a purpose for him. He was created for a purpose. He was saved for a purpose. He was hidden for a purpose. But when it was time for that purpose to come about, he wasn't hidden anymore. He was right in the big middle of everything. You know that he got the best education. You know that he got all the things that he wanted just because he was of, a, of his mom. You know that he understood the, understood the law and understood the ways 
of the uh, Egyptian people because that's how he was raised. It, how many times have, have we, as, as Christians, how many times ha have we really, really considered and thought about our life? Are we doing what God wants us to do? Are we going where God wants us to go, or are we going where I want to go? Are we talking to the people that God wants us to talk to? Or are we talking to the people that, hey, I want to talk to this person. I want to get to know this person. How many times Do we not do what we're supposed to do because of fear? One of my uh, other drivers, we was talking the other day, and and, and while I'm driving, I I, I'll, I call other drivers and see where they're going, what they're doing, and to see if their job is better than mine for the day, or if my job's better than theirs. And, things like that and and we was talking and he said you know and, and and he was talking about his children he said you know he said my daughter and and her husband he said man they're they're in church they're serving god they're they're, they're doing what god's supposed to, what they're supposed to do he said but my son he said I, he said turtle he said i don't think he's saved he said because of his lifestyle he said he said, I, then he started saying, he said, I know we need to start teaching our family more. We need, we need to start telling others about God. We need to start showing in God's love to others. And he, he said, wait, wait. He said, man, I, he said, I'm saying we. He said, but I, I should be saying I. He should be saying I need to just start. I told him, and I, said, I said, brother, I said, you said it right. I said, as Christians, we need to start doing it more. We need to start telling the world about Christ. I said, because if we were doing it, if we are doing it like we're supposed to, then right now the world would be in the condition that it is. Our communities wouldn't be in the condition that they're in. Our families wouldn't be in the condition that they're in. I said, you're right to say we as Christians because our purpose as Christians is to tell others about Christ. Our purpose as Christians is to show God's love to others. And, and, and it's, it's hard. I, and, and I... I uh, me and another driver, we, we was talking one day, and we was going in Siloam, and, and we was running from uh, Watts back up into Siloam, and, and there was this one guy standing at, at the McDonald's holding a sign, and on that sign, it says um, something like, house fire, family of seven, need help, uh, not able to work, lost all documents in the fire and, and you know the first time I seen him I, I felt bad I prayed for the man prayed for his family and then he was gone and then about a month later he was back same sign he was there for oh, probably about a week and then he was gone again and then we we didn't run that route for a while and then the next time we did it's probably it was probably Eight months later, and he was back again with the same sign. And we was talking, and he said, that guy, the other driver told me, he said, he said, he said, I don't know about it. He said, I feel sorry. He said, I felt sorry for him the first time I seen him. He said, because I, I couldn't understand, you know, if, if it really happened. He said, but to be standing here this long, And saying that you don't, you can't work, 
But there's all these little jobs, a little bit construction jobs that they will people they will hire people to do gopher work. And he said, and he's not finding a job. And then he says, oh, he said, get this. He said, my daughter said that one of her friends seen him buying tobacco. He said, you can't buy tobacco without an ID. He said, so what's he doing? And I told him, he said, man, he's, I told him, I said, man, all we can do is pray for him. He said, yeah. He said, you're right. That's all, that's all we can do. And I thought, well, actually, we could do more than that. We could take the time and, and get to, to talk to him and find out if he's really in that condition or if he's just playing the game. And I say all this because as Christians, we need to take the time to talk to the people. And a lot of times, a lot of times, I and, and it hurts for me to say this, but a lot of times, I am quick to judge people on their actions. I am quick to judge people on what they say and then what they do. And I know that's not right. And I have to ask for forgiveness a lot. A lot because I don't want to be that person that says, well, I, w- I would help, but I know they're not going to do it right. I don't want to be that person that says, yeah, but I heard this about them. We need to know for sure as Christians if our family is saved. We need to know if our children are saved. We need to know if our grandchildren are saved. We need to know if our brothers, our sisters, our mom, our dad, our aunts, our uncles are saved. Just because they go to church, just because they grew up in church, doesn't mean they're saved. Moses grew up in in a Pharaoh's house. but that didn't make him an Egyptian. He was still an Israelite, and he knew it. Later on, when you read later on, you you find out that as he grew up, like I mentioned earlier, that he had killed somebody because they was beating on one of the other Israelites. And then he ran. But, you know, that's, that's a great story. If you have never read the story of Moses, I, I urge you, to read it and reread it and reread it. It, It's not like the movie The Ten Commandments. We got Charles and Heston running around on there. But this story is great because it shows us that we are created for a purpose. And our purpose as a Christian is to do what God has set aside for us to do. Moses grew up in an Egyptian home. He grew up, again, with the best education of the Egyptians. He knew the law of the Egyptians. But when it came time to stand up for God, for his people, he did. And that's what we need to do. We we need to stand up for God more than we do right now. And you know, going back to to why he was born and 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 why he was put in the ark. The the purpose was. To lead his people out of bondage. Moses' purpose was to show Pharaoh that it don't matter how you're raised. When you turn and trust God, there's nothing that you can't do through him. I uh, I was thinking about that that move that 
movie The Ten Commandments when when I was going there and when the and and it, it, it's funny because a lot of a lot of Christians think they know the real story of Moses because of that movie. Because when I was reading, I thought, well, they didn't say that on the movie. They didn't do that in the movie. And I thought, well, of course they didn't. They don't know. <laughs> because they're making money off of that. They, they, they share God's word in the movie, but, but it wasn't about that. When you read the Bible, when you read God's Word, and, and, you, and you concentrate on it, and you think about it, man, the things that you can see. I, um, I've said this before. I was never really a, a reader until uh, Pam and I got together, and, and they'd be sitting around, and they were reading these books, and I said, what are y'all done reading a book for? Let's go do something. Let's go out and eat, or let's go play or something. But they was reading the books, and she said, here, read this one. And, and, and she gave me a, a John Grisham book to read. And, um, and I read it, and I, and I got to read it, and I thought, wait. She said, okay, now when you read it, Think about what it's saying. Think about, see if you can picture it in your mind. I thought, oh, that's crazy. So then I, I read it. Then I, I watched one of his movies. Then I went back and reread the book. And when you do that, you can see these things. So I, I learned that when, when you read, when you start to read, and you get into it, and, and that's the only thing you're focused on is what is being what you're reading. You can see what's going on. You can picture the places that if you've seen pictures of them or if you've been there, you can picture the places that, that they're talking about. And you can see the people's actions. You can see them through their emotions and things like that. So that's what was happening when I was reading reading this. The passage is here, and I was thinking, wait, they didn't do that in the movie? I said, of course not. Of course not. And I, I just, I can't wait to see, to see Moses and, and to see Aaron and, and to see Joseph and, and, and all these people that we've read about in the Old Testament because they really stood for God. There, there was no way that, that they couldn't because they, they endured so much. I mean, 40 years in the wilderness. 40 years walk around and, and, to, and to see them walk. To, I can just see them walk around with their sandals and, and just to think, you know, our shoes wear out six months, eight months, a year maybe. I'll say that I got a pair at the house that I've been wearing for three years. But they wore sandals for 40 years that never wore out. Their clothes never wore out. And, and I say this because it pertains to Moses because Moses listened to God and he realized what his purpose was. And, and you know, I, I can't say it enough and, and I know that we hear a lot when, when we listen to, to people preach and teach and things like that, that our purpose is to serve God. Our purpose is to tell others about God. Our purpose as parents is to teach our children about God. Our purpose as parents is to teach our grandchildren about God, and, and, and it, it's, it's, it's a whole different thing when it comes to grandchildren. It, it really is. We, we, um,
Last night we were sitting in, at the house and we went, after Pam got off work yesterday, we ran to Springdale and we went to, to Decatur to see, see our youngest daughter and, and our, our, grand, our grandbaby there. And, and we get home last night and sitting around and, and Pam put on some music on the TV I was sitting there, and all of a sudden, I hear noise, and I'm thinking, did I do that? Did I turn TV on? She goes, no. She said, I did. And then she was watching some beating stuff, and then she said, let's just do some music. I said, okay. She said, what are you going to listen to? And, and, and being human, the first thing I thought of was, man, I'd, I'd sure like to hear some of that that old country music or some of that, that old stuff I used to listen to back in the 80s, and, you know, the, the good stuff, the good music where, where you can understand the words and things. And boy, it sure got on my heart heavy when I started thinking like that. And I told her, I said, I said let's listen to The Lighthouse. And she pulled it up, and it come on, and and the lighthouse. If if you've never heard that song, look for, listen to it. As I sit there, and I had tears running. Because so many times in my life, That God's lighthouse, it was it showed at the right time, and, and, and it kept me from from crashing into the rocks. It it kept me from from doing things that I'm not supposed to do. It kept me from it. It just it just kept me out of harm's way. So many times. And, and, and that, that's one of my favorite songs. And, and we listen to s- some other songs. And, but, man, that, that song right there, it, it, just, it just hit me hard because I realized that my purpose as a Christian, my purpose as a father, my purpose as a grandfather, my purpose as an elder in this church is to make sure that the example that I live and lead and show is the example that God wants me to. I need to be more vigilant. I need to be more bold in, in sharing God's word. I need to be more personable to to others and and let them know that, hey, if you're not saved and if you die today, you're going to hell. I need to be that person that I expect our pastor to be. I need to be that person that I expect our, our, our leaders to be. How many, how many of us, uh, the older group, growing up in church, and, and how many times did, did you expect that, that your, your pastor or your Sunday school teacher or the, the deacons to take care of things in church. How many times did you expect them to make sure that everything was all right, that you didn't have to worry about nothing? And as elders today, not just in the church, but as adults, 
our youth, our children, our grandchildren are expecting us to show them the, the right way. And how can we not, how can we show them the right way if we're not doing it right? If we're not realizing what our purpose is. Created for a purpose. Show God's glory. How do we do that? Tell others about Jesus. We tell others about what he has brought us through. I know a, a, a lot of, I think, I think I say this a lot, and I, I don't mean anything by it, but a lot of the, the Indian people, a lot of the native people, they, they don't like to share what they've been through. They don't like to, to, to share what they're going through. I don't know if it's, it's our pride or what it is, but we would rather just grin and bear it and hope to make it through. It's, I've seen it my whole life. My mom and dad never knew when they were struggling, never knew when there was a problem. My aunts and uncles never knew when there was a problem. My brothers, sisters never knew. We, we just never shared those things. We never, never really asked for help for those things. That's just how we was raised. But our purpose, and, and I, say, I say this because we need to get past that. We need to get over our pride. We need to be humble. We need to, to know that God is there to help us. We need to let others know that God is there to help them. And we need to, we need to not worry about what the world thinks of us. As Christians, we need to stand on God's promise. We need to stand on God's word and share his love to others. Created for a purpose. Moses was created for a purpose. He was born. He was hidden. He was raised by his mom for as a child, even though she, she got paid for it. He was sent to live in Pharaoh's house. And then he went against. All he was taught because he was made for a purpose, and that was God's purpose was to use him to bring the Israelites out of captivity. Today we we have that same choice. He could have said no. He could have not done it. He could have said they can find their own way. But he listened to what God asked him to do. Today, as, as there are so many different ways that the world tells us we can get to heaven. We can do good works. If you're just nice, if you're just good to people, if you just give, if you treat people good, you're, you're, you'll be all right. We know what the Bible tells us. The only way to heaven is to accept Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. 
We know that because we're taught it in church and Sunday school. How many of our friends, how many people in our world where we work, how many people in, in our world where we go know that? How many people that, that we come across on a daily basis don't go to church, didn't go to Sunday school, didn't go to Bible school, didn't have that opportunity Our purpose is to share God's love and, and the news that Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. You know, I, I can I remember back when when I was probably seven, eight years old, and I got saved when I was seven. I remember back then at church they would always give time for testimony, and there was one lady. Every time they asked that, every, every Sunday, they would ask if anybody had a testimony. She would stand up, and she would say, Jesus is coming again, and Jesus is coming soon. It's more true today than it was yesterday. It's more true now than it was this morning. Are you ready? Is your family ready? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. Father, we thank you that, that this morning that, that you showed us a little bit about what our purpose is, and that is to serve you and, and to tell others about you. Father, the examples that you have set before us and, and Moses and, and many others that, that are in the Bible that, that stood firm on your word, that no matter what their surroundings were, no matter what was coming in front of them, that they stood up for you and they shared your glory. Father, I pray this morning that if anybody here that that is, is lost, that has not ever received your son. Lord, I pray you touch upon their hearts, that, that, they, that they come to know you. And Father, help us to, to show them the way. Father, if there's anybody here this morning that, that is saved, but is out of fellowship, that just going through the motions of, of coming to church and Lord, I ask you to touch upon their hearts and just revive their hearts and just revive that relationship with you. Lord, I, I pray that you just continue to, to use us as, as a church in, in this community and in, in, in our own little worlds that, Father, that we, we get bold, we, we be more bold and, and we stand firm and we tell others what you have done. Lord, I just want to say thank you for saving me. And thank you for everything you've blessed me with. I pray for our church that you just continue to bless us. I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.